Name any Formula One driver and usually you can think of quite a few memorable moments from their careers, but sometimes one thing stands out way above the rest. Here at the race, we've been giving thought to some drivers who are remembered or even defined by one moment from their time in F1. It was a tough job cutting this list down to 10, so make sure you let us know in the comments which others you would have included, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Marcus Ericsson wasn't directly involved in the moment that he is now most remembered for from his 97 race F1 career. Ericsson initially got the blame for Romain Grosjean's bizarre accident under safety car conditions in Baku in 2018. Although it is often forgotten that it was Grosjean's engineer who uttered the famous line of, I think Ericsson hit us, even though the quote is usually attributed to Grosjean. Grosjean might have forgotten this as well. When he was asked about it in a video for F1's YouTube channel, among the laughter and apologies to Ericsson, Grosjean said, I can't believe that ended up in my mouth, even though it didn't. Today, you can be sure that any spin or accident in F1 will be met with fans online blaming Ericsson, who now races in IndyCar. There's all sorts of things you could remember from the 1989 French Grand Prix. A home win for Alain Prost, Jean Alesi's impressive debut for Tyrrell, and Nigel Mansell's charge from a pit lane start to a podium finish as just three examples. But one moment stands out from that race and from Mauricio Gugelman's F1 career, and that's the site of an upside down Leighton House march at the first corner. Gugelman steamed into Thierry Boutsen's Williams and Gerhard Berger's Ferrari, vaulting into the air and hitting Mansell's car as chaos broke out around him. The Brazilian then got into the spare car and set the only fastest lap of his career in the restarted race. Recently, former F1 designer Mike Gascoigne revealed that he'd used the images of the upside down march to copy Adrian Newey's diffuser design for the following year's McLaren, which went on to take Ayrton Senna to his second world championship. Thiago Monteiro is one of the only people who can look back fondly on F1's embarrassing 2005 US Grand Prix, when only six cars took part after the Michelin teams withdrew at the end of the formation lap. Concerns that Michelin's tyres couldn't handle the loads of the banked final corner at Indianapolis and a failure of everyone involved to come to a compromise left Ferrari in the clear to take a 1-2 finish. The race for the final podium spot was fought out between Minos, Jordan and Minardi, with Montero claiming the honours 31 seconds ahead of teammate Narain Karthikeyan. While Michael Schumacher and Rubens Barrichello looked somewhat embarrassed up on the podium, Montero made the most of the moment, celebrating wildly as the Ferrari drivers escaped from the booing crowd without even spraying their champagne. Montero says all three drivers were told not to celebrate too much before they went onto the podium, but he wanted to enjoy the moment and celebrate it properly with his team watching on in what was a difficult final year at the end of Jordan's time in F1. Had Enrique Bernaldi's F1 career started later in the 2000s, it almost certainly would have been in a Toro Rosso. But Red Bull didn't own two teams in 2001, so he was placed at Arrows. Bernaldi never scored a point in his 28 starts, but he got plenty of airtime at the 2001 Monaco Grand Prix. Pole sitter David Coulthard stalled before the formation lap and was forced to start from the back of the grid for the second time in three races due to a glitch with McLaren's new launch control software. He recovered to fifth, but spent more than 30 laps stuck behind Bernaldi, who fought hard to defend his position and was even shown blue flags by mistake on occasions. Coulthard was released once Bernaldi pitted, but afterwards a furious Ron Dennis criticised Bernaldi and Arrows for being unsporting and desperate for TV coverage. Bernaldi said he was threatened afterwards by Dennis and Mercedes chief Norbert Haug, claiming they told him he wouldn't be in F1 for very long if he drove like that again. Dennis admitted that he spoke to Bernaldi afterwards, but he called that particular accusation rubbish. Norberto Fontana started four F1 races in 1997 as Sauber chopped and changed the drivers in its second car through the season. He was in the seat for the Jerez finale, where he claims he was given an important job to do. As Michael Schumacher and Jacques Villeneuve duelled for the World Championship at the head of the field, they caught Fontana's Sauber. He let Schumacher through, then pulled back onto the racing line in front of Villeneuve. Sauber was in the first year of using Ferrari engines, and while the moment looked conveniently suspicious, 
Fontana waited nine years before revealing in a magazine interview that he'd been given strict orders from Ferrari boss Jean Todt to hold Villeneuve up. Todd and Sauber denied the claims, and Fontana added that his actions that day cost him a drive with Tyrrell for 1998, because Villeneuve's manager Craig Pollock had led British American Tobacco's takeover of the team. Pastor Maldonado was more than a pay driver with an appetite for destruction, but I've lost you already, haven't I? Stick with us on this one. Maldonado arrived in F1 as the GP2 champion, following the likes of Nico Rosberg, Lewis Hamilton, Timo Glock and Nico Hülkenberg. And in 2010, he'd beaten Sergio Perez and Jules Bianchi to the feeder series title. But his five years in F1 with Williams and Lotus were incident-packed and his reputation as a crasher was set. It endures to this day, with Max Verstappen recently joking ahead of his guest appearance in the online Australian Supercars series that he calls his friend Shane Van Gisbergen Pasta because he is the King Shunter. It's easy to forget that Maldonado did win a Grand Prix. Bertrand Gachot failed to qualify for 37 of the 84 F1 races he turned up to, often struggling to drag woeful machinery onto the grid. But in 1991 he was having the best season of his career, winning Le Mans with Mazda and driving the quick and gorgeous Jordan 191. But his season was cut short when Gachot was sent to jail for an altercation with a London taxi driver the previous winter. Jordan had to scramble to find a replacement ahead of the Belgian Grand Prix and it found Michael Schumacher. Gachot tried to resurrect his F1 career with LaRousse and Pacific after that, but he will forever be remembered for spraying CS gas into the face of a taxi driver and paving the way for one of the all-time greats. Nelson Piquet Jr's crash in the 2008 Singapore Grand Prix looked awfully convenient as it enabled Renault teammate Fernando Alonso's strategy to pay off to give him victory from 15th on the grid. Renault got away with it at the time, but when it sacked Piquet during the following season, he helped lift the lid on the scandal. Piquet said he was ordered to crash at a point on the circuit that would force race officials to call on the safety car, benefiting Alonso's strategy. Piquet never raced in F1 again, but more than a decade later he is still synonymous with Singapore 2008. He calls the backlash he still receives for the incident ignorant, and those close to him believe he was affected by it for a long time. Ricardo Zonta's two full seasons in F1 can be defined by a matter of seconds when he was being lapped in the 2000 Belgian Grand Prix. Zonta's BAR was caught by the leaders on the Kemmel Strait, one lap after Michael Schumacher had almost put Mika Hakkinen on the grass at nearly 200 miles per hour. The Brazilian held position in the middle of the road to keep the racing line open, but as Schumacher passed him on the outside, Hakkinen darted to the inside to pass them both. Zonta admitted he had no idea Hakkinen was there and he had the best seat in the house as he watched the McLaren then beat Schumacher's Ferrari to the apex at Le Coombe to take a famous win. Is that Glock? Three words said with a lot more vigour by Martin Brundle at the end of the 2008 Brazilian Grand Prix have etched Timo Glock into F1 folklore. Glock was struggling to keep his Toyota pointing in the right direction on the final lap of the race, having gambled on staying out on slicks as the rain hit. But by the final lap that gamble was on the verge of backfiring. Glock's pace dropped by 9 seconds on the penultimate lap and then another 16 seconds on the way to the chequered flag, just enough for Lewis Hamilton to pass him at the final proper corner to grab the fifth place he needed to win the world championship in the most dramatic fashion. Conspiracy theories remain to this day claiming that Glock slowed down deliberately to let Hamilton beat home hero Felipe Massa to the championship. Glock says he gets it every year when the Brazilian Grand Prix rolls around. F1 uploaded Glock's onboard from that lap to its YouTube channel in 2017, showing how hard he was trying just to stay on the track. And not many people realise that Glock's Toyota teammate Jarno Trulli was also on slicks and their lap times were within a tenth of a second of each other. If that was somehow coordinated in those changeable conditions, then Glock and Trulli were much better drivers than they were ever given credit for. That's the end of our list. Which drivers did we miss that you remember for just one thing? Let us know in the comments, and remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already.